welcome back to my channel. Hi, I'm Raven. You guys know Raven because you already met her exactly. through a couple of vlogs. But anyway, me and Raven are here because we wanted to do a video about grad school and everything else. This doesn't necessarily pertain to everybody, but this one is specifically for one of my subscribers. Her name is Kiara, I believe. K Y A. I R A. <laughs> so we're gonna call you Kiara B. She wanted to know about the grad school process, specifically like application stuff and letter of intent, um, like the GRE stuff like that. So we realize everybody isn't necessarily into all of this stuff, but you're still welcome to watch anyway. The first thing we're going to talk about is how to choose schools. How did you choose schools? Um, personally, I went on to ASHA website and I went through, typed in grad school, specifically just grad school, and I went through a list. They have an ABC order listed, and I went through to see what areas I could live in, uh, possibly what states I think I could live in, and I just went through and narrowed them down from there. And, and as you, if you click on the school, they'll give you like the GPA that you need, the um, GRE score that you need, the amount of applications that they had, and the number of intake. So. I, she did that and then I took a different route. Um, I didn't have that many options because, well, in-state tuition is you know kind of a thing. So um, basically, I just looked at schools that were closest to me and that had the program. Now, if you can still do both. Like you can look for schools that are closest to you and then you can look on the ASHA website. It's ASHA stands for American Speech Language Hearing Association. So it's kind of what gives you your license as an SLP or an audiologist, if that's what you wanted to do. But this doesn't necessarily have to be just about like the speech programs or speech pathology. You can do this for your own program or whatever it is. You can still go on your web or website that you know might give you information about different schools and see what states that your schools could be in it's a lot on the web a lot these days so i'm <laughs> yeah. sure you can look that up and find it so the next thing is grad school application process <laughs> no joke it's a lot but i mean you're gonna do it because you want to go to grad school yes. so doesn't matter so one thing that you have to have is a resume so make sure that you're updating your resume as you're experiencing new things. There's a lot of resources that you can use to update your resume. I'll try to find an online source of some sort that I can link down in the description box that will help you know how to update your resume the proper way because that's really important. The second thing you need to have is recommendations <laughs> at least three at least three recommendations who would you ask for recommendations um i specifically asked my professors or i did practicums in my undergrad so i asked one of the ladies from my practicum to also be my recommendation i asked your teachers i'm pretty sure it has to be teachers yeah i think so i somebody believe. that has known you yeah and knows your work and knows your work ethic and has like seeing you kind of what you do in the classroom stuff like that third thing which is probably the hardest thing is the gre or whatever whatever like test that you're taking yes you have to have a good score and good can mean different things at different schools a lot of schools will focus on some schools don't focus on the GRE score or whatever like test you took. We took, you took the GRE. I took the GRE. I took the GRE too. Some schools do not like focus in on just your GRE scores, but some schools do. I'm not going to say any schools on here because I'm <laughs> not trying to get sued, <laughs> but it's, I'm just saying that look up the schools and look up, you know, the requirements that they have, but you have to have a good, somewhat decent score on any type of standardized test that make that helps you get into the program. So you can do a number of things about that. You can look up different, whatever tests you need to take. And I'm sure that they have classes, books, all types of stuff on it. I um, took the GRE. I had an older book, not even like one of the newest books. I studied from that. I'm not a good standardized test taker. So I'm in that same boat. It wasn't going to do much for me, but um, clearly I did good enough <laughs> to get into a program. So 
GRE score is definitely important. Next is the letter of intent. This is a big thing. A letter of intent of intent. Oh. <laughs> the letter of intent is the letter that you write basically explaining to the school why you deserve to be at their grad school. Mm -hmm. This is a big thing that they will read over and over. Mm -hmm. And you need to make sure it makes you stand out according to everybody else that's trying to apply for the same position. You need to make sure that your letter of intent is tailored towards the program and towards the school that you're going to. So which means you need to do a little research. You need to know what type of teachers are there, what what does their staff kind of specialize in, stuff like that. So that's how they know that you're a good candidate for their school and their specific program. And that's how you know that that's a good school for you to even go to. Content-wise, for the letter of intent, you want to start off first giving why you're interested in that program. And then you want to go into your practicums, if you've done any practicums or anything associated with speech. Mm -hmm. um, it can even be like giving hearing screenings to children. Um, also, you might also want to put your goals for your future. And then also, at the end, I think you want to come back around and read back to why you would be the perfect candidate. Yeah, and as far as your letter of intent goes, um, like lengthwise and everything, let's just be professional. <laughs> Okay, so don't do any fancy, cutesy. We know this. Like, yes. if you've gotten to this position to where you're about to you apply to for grad school, like, you know, yeah. like, you know, and especially if you're an SLP major, you know, um, we don't write a lot, well, in our region, we don't write a lot of research papers, but you know in any type of professional document of some sort, or research, even research papers, being concise is key. So don't Tell us, you know, the reasons that you have for everything. Answer the questions. Do whatever you need to do. But don't ramble. Leave the fluff out. So be concise. I would say limit it to about two pages unless your um, institution that you're applying to gives you a specific, like, page yeah, length or whatever. Long. Yeah, unless they give you, like, something like that. But I would not go over two pages, keep it concise, make sure it's in black or blue font at 12 point, you know, the size of the font needs to be 12. And then like Times New Roman, Courier, or whatever, those professional fonts. Also, for your letter of intent, you need to have somebody read it over and over and over again. Yes. You need to proofread it. You need to have your mama proofread it, have your sister, have your cousins. But look, now don't have your mama, your sister, and your cousins proofreading if that they not, you know, like <laughs> yeah, you see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like don't have like a teacher maybe proofread it, like maybe another student who's doing the same thing, you know, but proofread it and edit it so that it is Nearly perfect. I went to the Career Development Center and one of the ladies in there helped me with my resume yeah. and my letter of intent and we were going over it almost every day. Yeah. Just make sure you take extra time, extra loving on your letter of intent. It's very important. Oh, one more thing I forgot to no. add. Um, also, why did you choose speech language pathology? Oh, or whatever, yeah, or whatever program. Oh, yeah, in. whatever program. But definitely why you chose speech language pathology, because that's the <laughs> best program there is, boo. No, really, it's the it best. It really is, like, just, you can't, that's it. There's no other major. I'm going to do a video of why SLP is the best program there like is. like a list of things. Uh, like, this video will be going on forever. The last thing is, well, we talked about it a little bit earlier, um, but the GRE, we took the GRE, so that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Because some of our other friends took another. Yeah, like test. GMAT. Yeah, I don't GMAT, know. I think it was. I don't know what it's called. It's whatever that institution requires for you to take. You right. Know, to take. One of my subscribers, Kiara, shout out to her again. Woo -woo. She, <laughs> she asked for these things, so I'm trying to answer questions and get all of the stuff out there that you guys are asking to see. About the GRE, you have basically three options. <laughs> now listen, the GRE is not, it is a standardized test. Like standardized tests are not, they don't test you on what you know. They not test you on whatever they, is, whatever it is they wanna test you on. Number one, take a class, study, and pray. <laughs> Number two, buy a book, study, and pray. <laughs> Number three, 
don't study, pray, and take the test. I don't recommend that. I don't recommend <laughs> I don't recommend the third option. But I took the GRE twice. I made the exact same score both times. Ooh. You know, it's it's just one of those things that you gotta do. It's just a test that you have to take. You figure out whatever way is best for you that you study or that you prepare for it, but just make sure you do what you need to do the yeah. best. Make you sure can. you're able. If you do buy the book, make sure you start early so you can get through the book. Yeah. Yeah. Give yourself some time to definitely. And there's other study. things. Like my friend had a CD that she put in her car and would listen to. So it's, it's all another different method. kinds of ways. To right. Study. All different types of ways to study. That is the end of this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, put that down in the comment section below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Kiera, let me know what you're thinking, girl. Um, also, anybody who's watching, let me know any questions that you might have. Maybe if I can't answer them, then maybe Raven can answer them. <laughs> no, if I can't answer them, maybe I can direct you to somebody who can. Help it help. We will see you guys next week. Well, I will see you guys. <laughs> I will see you guys next week. You have to do it. Bye, darlings.